Who'd you just vote for? What'd you just vote for? Non committed. Why? I don't like either candidate. One is Biden is a little too old, and Trump is too far right extreme for me. That was a voter in Detroit, Michigan, earlier today, explaining his uncommitted vote in the state's Democratic primary today, not because of President Biden's handling of the conflict in Gaza, but because of his age. Joining me now is Democratic Michigan State Senator Mallory McMorrow. Senator McMorrow, thanks for being here tonight. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot this evening about the war in Gaza. We've been talking about Trump v. Haley and the schism inside the Republican Party. I am really interested to hear from you how new X factors are influencing the Michigan electorate and specifically the question of reproductive freedoms. IVF, because of the Alabama court ruling, has become a national issue. And I wonder if you could give us a sense of how that's playing out on the ground in your state in terms of animating Democratic voters, independents, and even maybe Republicans. Look, I can tell you, heading into this election year, I think a lot of people felt a lot of fatigue at the thought of a rematch of 2020. But in the wake of the Alabama ruling and a state representative here who's gained a lot of attention uh, in the Republican Party recently, who's called for an outright ban on contraception, it has fired people up. There have been phone banks and events organizing all around the state because this was an issue that Michigan led on hard in 2022. Women mobilized extremely hard to codify abortion access and reproductive rights in our state constitution. And we'll be damned if that gets overdone on the federal level. So it is going to be a huge issue heading to, into November. Senator Chris Hayes here. Just to follow up on that, you talk about phone banks. I'm just curious, there was a tremendous and tremendously effective statewide organizing push around that statewide constitutional amendment that secured abortion rights. Are those organizations, those folks like still in touch? Is there sort of is there still the capacity that was there, the connections that were made, the volunteer bases, all the things you need to mobilize in 2022? Is that still extant? And will that play a factor in November? A hundred percent it is. You know, this is something I, I have to give credit where credit is due on the right, that the anti-choice movement did and did successfully for a long time was attempt ballot measures, even though they knew it wasn't going to be successful mm. because it mobilized volunteers, mm -hmm. allowed them contact information. Now we're doing it on our side. These people are engaged. They're connected. We have organizers in all 83 counties and they are ready to go again. I want to ask just a little bit about how the prosecutions of Donald Trump are playing out in a state like Michigan, where you have an attorney general who's actively pursuing uh, fake electors who tried to interfere with the results of the 2020 campaign, where there was a plot to assassinate the governor of your state, where there's a strong militia presence. I mean, is that does that does that animate the Republican side as equally as it does the Democratic side? Can you talk just a little bit about how that all plays out in terms of the internal Michigan politics? You know, it's interesting because the, the Republican side is going through a bit of an identity crisis right now. There are two competing state GOP parties and potentially two competing conventions. There was a court case playing out just today to decide which convention is the actual GOP convention. And it is this schism of people who will willingly fall in line behind Donald Trump, despite the fact that, yes, there was a plot to kidnap and potentially kill the governor. I was on the Senate floor below men in carrying AR-15s in full tactical gear. And most Michiganders just want to move on. But it's really hard to let go of the allure for some people of Donald Trump, who demands nothing but 100 percent loyalty. Can you can you talk to us real quick about the, the young people of Michigan, which makes me sound like a very much an old person. But as we get this vote in for uncommitted there, there is a there is a sizable portion of young voters in in, in the Ann Arbor area and Ypsilanti who are, are voting uncommitted as a sort of sign of either mistrust or distaste for the incumbent president. And I wonder how much of an issue you think that is in the in terms of the general election, potentially November, how much. President Biden needs to shore up support with Michigan's young. You know, I was just uh, at the University of Michigan last week giving a, a talk to, to young people there. And I think there was a real fear that I had, this kept me up at night, that young people were just going to stay home this election. So the fact that we do have 
people turning out and making their voices heard. There's a long time between now and November. I know that the administration has worked hard well before this primary to reach out and connect, particularly on the issue of the war between Israel and Gaza right now, what we're seeing happen. Hopefully the news of a brokered ceasefire comes to fruition, but you know, engaging young people, in my mind, in Michigan, is a great thing. That is exercising mm. your right to vote now. That's going to pave a path to November that we desperately need. Michigan State Senator Mallory McMorrow, great to have you on the program. Thank you so much for the insight. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I think it's so invaluable hearing from the people who actually understand, first totally of all, agree. what she was saying about the infrastructure that has been built up completely in and around the question of reproductive freedom. I mean, when you talk about what the whole ball game might be actually in November, yeah. could be IVF, could be abortion, could be the sort of freedom of bodily autonomy. And I also think that the last point she made, I think, is actually a really important one. And I hadn't thought of it this way. And I think there's something to be said for the, uh, the, the way the Lishna Michigan campaign has gone about this, mm -hmm. which is... There's some folks that are, you know, have run a campaign called Abandoned Biden, which is like, it's done, it's over, whatever. The, the perspective of Listen to Michigan is that these are people who are, have real complaints. They're substantive complaints. They disagree with the president's yep. policy. How do we engage them in such a way that keeps them in an active political dialogue yeah. and actively politically involved, building towards something, right. as opposed to feeling completely alienated, rejected? And, and her point there of, look, active is better than inactive. Yeah. Invested is better than alienated and mm -hmm. diffident, I think is actually a really important one for thinking about what the next five or six months into November look like. And a good sign for representative democracy. Completely. Right? That's what it should we be. We believe That's right. that we can see change yeah, right. if we just speak loudly enough. Yep. All right. We're going to have more of our continuing special coverage of the Michigan Democratic primary coming up. Stay with us. Absolutely. We voted uncommitted today, uh, again, to put that pressure on the current administration um, to uh, call for a ceasefire so that um, we can see peace and, um, yeah, just just peace uh, around the world and, and no more death. And um, so that's our goal.